Praise God. Okay. No, we were singing that a few minutes ago. And by the way, we have a sign-up sheet if anybody would like to be on our mailing list. Dr. Dave used to call and set me straight once a month. Right there. Glad to have him. Heard his voice, knew who it was. We did a camp meeting last week in, um, in Don Struble. If you start naming people, then you get in trouble. <laughs> well, he's on my board of directors now. So, uh, and uh, 20 years ago, December, we organized Rumble Ministries and Sister Paula and just everybody, Wendy, and it's good to be here. Last week, we were in a cross city. A cross city, if you know much about Florida, is a really a country town, but it's a we're no country church. And they got a hold of this fire thing. I don't think I'm going to speak on that, but they they done about what you were doing a while ago. Jeremiah 29. And when he said, I will not make mention of him anymore. I will not speak anymore. There are people who like for it. I'm not preaching. I'm just sharing something here. They, they like for us not to say anything. But his word was in my heart like a fire shut up in my bones. They can't keep us quiet. And it doesn't matter. In fact, the worse it gets in this, the worse it gets, and it's going to get worse. Now you say you're being pessimistic. No, it's just, that's just the way the time we're seizing, we're living in. For the world, it's going to get worse. That should make us more cantankerous than ever. That should make us more radical. And, just, and I don't know, I, I don't sing specials. I just, you know, just felt like I just wanted to kind of worship the Lord a little bit before I really get into it. Just, just bow your heads and... <clears throat> My fire is burning in my soul My fire is burning in my soul Yes, it is, Lord The fire is burning in my soul Don't you feel the fire burning? Don't you feel the fire burning? The fire, the fire is burning. Just worship him. The fire, the fire is burning. <laughs> the fire is burning in my soul. Yes, it is. The fire is burning in my soul. Yes, it is. The fire is burning in my soul. Don't you feel this fire burning in your soul? Yes, I do. Don't you feel this fire burning in your soul? I can't keep quiet, I won't keep quiet. I can't keep quiet, I won't keep quiet. No, I won't. <laughs> oh, no. I won't keep quiet, I can't keep quiet. I won't keep quiet, I can't keep quiet. No, I won't. This fire is burning deep in my soul. This fire is burning deep in my soul. There's a sound, there's a sound in my soul. Yes, it is. There's a sound, there's a sound in my soul. Yes, it is. Sound is pounding deep in my soul. Oh yes, it is. This sound is pounding deep in my soul. I can't keep it quiet. I won't keep it quiet. I don't keep it quiet. No, I won't keep it quiet in my soul. Mm. I don't always do that, but I just had to. Wow. Amen.
Now you may be taking this thing, but I will be prohibited if I stand up here at the pulpit. Amen? So I'll do my best to be good. <laughs> but there's a something. The Lord was saying, and I wrote some things down. I always wrote things down as Paul and Wendy and all them. But there must always be a beginning of something, and I'll try to stay with it, but there must also always be a beginning of something before we can be, be before we can go beyond where we are now. And everybody wants to go beyond where they are now, but they don't want to do anything about it. And some never venture out into the future. Thus the future never begins. I just wrote these things this morning about four o'clock in the morning. But those who are bold in faith to venture out into the future. You see, the future we haven't been. Now, at our past conference, our bishop of the denomination I'm in was preached about pulling the future into the present. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Amen? But the truth of the matter is, so many people are saying, someday. I'm not preaching yet. I'm just giving you some stuff. Someday, I'll get there. Some are, this is a, I got this this morning. The next seven weeks, the next seven weeks, I'll be, in, I'll be in different churches every Sunday. And God gave me something different for each church each Sunday. We're going to be in a, a big black church in one of my churches in Lutz next Sunday. We were, it's, they, their service is four hours long. Amen. This is a prophetic rhema word. Now, you can take it or not. Amen. 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 Of encouragement. You see... That beginning today, July the 21st, through September the 18th, I got dates on this thing, and I'm going to give you this piece of paper, because it's no good for next week. I mean, it has to be something else. Are you hearing me? This is for this church, and if you're a guest visiting here, you can take it for you too. That beginning today, nine weeks, God says, I'm going to do some birthing. I'm going to do some prophetic birthing that has not been done. I say this, this people, I don't know how many belong here or how many visitors, but this church has not been birthed yet into what you want it to be and what God has called it to be. But we're in the kingdom season, and I call this supernatural Sunday summer event. <laughs> you see, the next seven weeks till September 24th is summer. And God says there are going to be events taking place here and events taking place in your life that you never thought could happen. I'm just reading. I, I'm glad. I'm, I'm just speaking. I'm not even preaching. Y'all, amen. 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 <laughs> Events. It means God says, he says in Ecclesiastes 9 and 2, there are one event to the righteous, and he speaks of other things too. But there is an event. There is, there is an event going to take place in your lives, in my life, in Joyce's life, that's going to turn, that's going to change the course of things that's going on in your life. An event. I don't mean just something. I mean, it's going to be an event. An event that the enemy of deceit cannot, pre the devil cannot prevent this. And this goes with the message. I'm not even preaching now. Amen. I got well, plenty of time. I got one or two o'clock. But you see, people say they have revivals. And then after the speaker's gone, the people are gone. I'm not preaching revival anymore. In fact, last week was called a camp meeting. We need an event that's going to affect people. People say, I got saved, but it didn't affect them. If something don't affect you, it has not happened. Amen? I'm talking about an event that's going to affect you. Effect. And it's going to radically. Watch it, Pastor. Next seven weeks, something's going to, something is going to be projected. Watch it, Brother Don Well, I know you're already being projected. In fact, me and Joyce, you know, last year at this time, things were kind of quiet. Since, since December, we've been somewhere every single Sunday speaking. But God says, I'm going to project. I'm getting ready to project my people. I'm getting ready because they are mine elect. Now, the song a while ago, I don't know if you heard it or not. I don't mess your theology up. But the song is, he kept saying, we ain't going nowhere. In other words, we got something yet to do. Amen? Or we would be gone. Now, I'll rest my case on that. You don't believe in the coming of the Lord? Yes, I believe he's coming. But if it was all done, we would be gone. So evidently, there's something yet to be done, something yet that must take place in the body of Christ. So that's yours, Pastor. It won't be good for next week. I'll have to say something else concerning that. Amen? But do you hear me? So God says it's going to be a super summer event. Now, this was the scripture. This was too much stuff here. Amen? And if I lay this down, I will. 
And I used this last week. I have to be honest. I, this is not the first time that I, I got a hold of this. And my God, to me, it bless if I shade him with Kushandaya. I'm not talking about emotion now, but I like emotion. My God, I talk, people talk about fire, flesh, emotion, excitement. Some of the deadest churches. Reaps of rigor mortis. I mean, you walk in some Pentecostal church. I'm not talking about the Baptist. Shame on us. In fact, I heard a fellow talking to Perry Stone the other day. He said, half the Southern Baptists were filled with the Holy Ghost more than the Assemblies of God. Amen. And Elijah said, they have, get thee up and drink, for there is a sound of abundance. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's not the exciting part to me. You hear the sound before you feel the rain. You hear the sound. I got about six acres, and and I I, I know I, I, it begins to get real cool in my face, and, I, and the wind begins to blow, and I can hear it off. And I know by now that at a certain point, I better get up to the house because I'm a long way sometimes back in the field cutting. If I don't get up to the house, I'm going to get wet. Are you here? Listen, listen. And it came to pass the heaven was black with clouds, wind, all that would preach, great rain. <laughs> The drought is broken. Now some people say, I got a word. I only got three, two or three people and they could get words from me. My words become messages and my messages become words. It all goes together. I want to tell you right now. I preach. Stuff I send you, I preach. I want to tell you right now. He says that the drought is over. The drought is broken. The thing is done. And you say, how do you know? Because this is the driest, this is the driest month for church. And I, I rebuke pastors. We're going through a summer slump. There is no such thing as a slumber, summer slump in the kingdom of God. But rather, he said, it's going to be a summer harvest. It should not be slumps. This is not the time of year when you have a slump. It's when you have the harvest, amen. And the slump, and the harvest, and the, the drought is over. The enemy of the sea, see, enemy, the devil thought, sorry. I'm not just being cruel. It's just so much that you need to, you need to learn how to operate with stuff. I've got to operate the best way. I don't want to be hung up to say that. Amen. Amen. That's the enemy of seat. The seat. Thought he had you hedged in. How many times you think I'm hedged in? I can't get out of this predicament. I want to tell you, you can get out of this situation. You can get out of this circumstance. It does not have to be the way it's been unless you accept that. I don't accept it. into it. Do not accept things as the way it is. And that should be the faith teaching. You don't accept things this way you say. We're not look, we don't look at things as they are and things as they not are. And the, time is, the thing is, we are being too influenced by what we see. Then we talk about the drought. Exodus 14, 3. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. It is a wilderness or trout. The enemy thinks he has us trapped. He thinks he has us trapped by all the political stuff going on. And sometimes we can get caught up in that in our opinions what we think. But my God, my God. You are not entangled. You are not trapped in any kind of situation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're not trapped in any kind of situation in the name. But right there, right there. You see, when you think you're hedged in, listen to me. I'm sorry if you're not getting this video on the tape. Oh, you think you're hedged in. I'm speaking loud. When you think you're hedged in, you're really on the edge. Right. 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 You see, he wants you to think you hedged in. You, there's nowhere to go but means you're right on the edge. Yes. Mm. Right there on the bank of a miracle. Just like the children of Israel when they stood on the bank of a miracle facing the feet. And I preach this all the time. When they were facing the Jordan, they said the Jordan overflowed its banks. I've never heard anybody preach this. Except that they When the Jordan overflowed its banks all the time of harvest. You don't know what hell I'm going through. You don't know what I'm going through. That means your harvest is there. Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 
have not seen. The kingdom of answers. I knew it would be some answers here, and I added this. But listen, Psalms 149 and 50 talks about the dancers. We need the dancers in the church. Amen. We said the dancers lead the body Amen. of Christ, lead the people in the warfare. Sometimes I get my mind on it, and I get my views and my uh, my thoughts on it. But the kingdom of God is advancing, and we are living in the greatest time of our life. We, we have there's a open window to us, a window of opportunity that we must take advantage of. Thank you, Lord. That we must take advantage of. That we must take advantage of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That right now the world needs someone with answers, but we don't have the answers. But we've got the answer. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We don't know exactly what's going to take place. But we know it's taking place in my life. And I'm telling you, the fire of God. Sometimes it sounds so simple. But I'm going to tell you, that's the hardest thing to get. It's, it's hard to get no fire started. Amen. You can take fire. So what about wildfire? Well, I'd rather have wildfire than no fire anytime. I'll tell you, you can, you can kind of train wildfire. But you can't sometimes just dead stuff. Sometimes I'm in a church praying. And last week we had a hall uh, at the last service. And that we anointed people wanted prayer. And I think I prayed for about 150 people. And, and I get to some people and they're just like a dead log. <laughs> Come on, you have them. Yeah, yeah. Dead log. Yeah. You can throw a gallon of kerosene, gasoline, perfume, whatever. They're not going to light up. They just do it to me. If you can. Do it to me. If you can. No, I don't have, I don't have nothing to do. I've got a lit up fuse. And if I touch you, if you got a fuse, you're going to get lit up. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what we need. We need a lot of people need a jump start, amen. amen. <laughs> we got a couple of churches that I take care of that kind of day and said, You need a jump start. Talking to the pastor yesterday, I said, Pastor, you need a jump start. He was talking about how bad it was. He hasn't got a salary. The church is too much of payments. I said, Hush. Now listen. There's something wrong with this story. Because he says, I'm a faith man. I said, Well, let's back up if your horse is here. If you're a faith man, then something's wrong with this picture. Then my wife and my dirty kid off. But I got back. What I'm saying is this. I'm hearing something. You gotta hear the sound. And no one can put that in you. No one can prophesy that with you. No one can dig you out. You gotta in your spirit, regardless of what's going on or not going on, regardless of what's taking place. That's supposed to pick me up, right? Whatever's going on, he's like, whatever. You've got to know for yourself. You've got to know for yourself. you got to know. you got to have that sound in your heart. God spoke to me a few weeks ago and said, The drought is over. Yes. Now, Brother Struble takes care of my paperwork, and you see how lean he gets sometimes. This has been the best days we've seen. Praise the Lord. Yes. And I'm saying that, you know, well, then you don't need no money. No, I need all you got to give. <laughs> But that's not, no, if you didn't give anything. I mean, there's something about it. When you get it in your spirit that the drought is over, it doesn't matter if you get laid off. It doesn't matter what takes place. You know, somehow, you heard it. You heard it. Not from the Tampa Tribune or from the, or the St. Petersburg Times, but you have heard the sound that there is abundance of rain coming. Yes, man. Is this all right? Yeah. But there's abundance. He says, more than you have need of. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm prophesying. I'm prophesying that this place is it's not going to be big enough, bro. Amen. Yeah. It's not going to be big enough. If we've heard from God, and if we're stirred up, if we're stirred up in the Spirit, but this thing sounds you got to hear a sound. I can see sometimes when church and the spirit is moving and no one's doing nothing, no one's moving out. You know, you got to do something first. You got to move your spirit out. You got to say that, that so many people, and it's the spirit of God. We go into churches, 
And pastors are compromising. This brother teaches so good. Well, you're looking serious. <laughs> oh. <laughs> People have compromised. Pastors have compromised. We were in a church the other night, and this guy put his money in the church, and it's a questionable whether he's saved or not. Pastor sitting right behind him, we were in a little Bible study, and I asked the man, I said, Are you saved? Yeah. Scared him. Spit out everybody. Because he puts all the money in the church. That's are you saved? He said, well, pastor sits right behind it. I, feel, I, I would have took the man outside. The man is ready for salvation, but because he put so much money in the church, we're afraid we're going to offend him. We're afraid if we worship God too much, we're going to offend the people. A brick ward, somewhere up there, it's done change. God, they say, Chris, what's the word? Chris Lam. Chris Lam. You cannot mix brick ward. Yes, California. You cannot mix brick ward. Paul said, my spirit was stirred within me. Paul said, my spirit was stirred within me. When I saw what was taking place, our spirit, there are people, brothers and sisters, they're going to compromise. They're going to compromise these days. They're going to compromise for the benefit of being accepted. No, we won't be accepted on that day we stand before God if we do such a thing. God will say, I don't, people say, haven't I done this? Haven't done that? There's a passage of scripture says, they'll say, haven't we asked out devils? Haven't we done all these wonderful things? And the Lord will say, I don't know who you are. Am I preaching okay? You're preaching okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. 2 Samuel 5, 24, and let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going. And the word there going means a marching. There's a marching in my spirit. There's a marching in my spirit. There's something marching in my spirit. There's something marching. The brother does come up with two and two or something like that. Something marching in our spirit. We know that there's a sound. And we stir ourselves up. And I wrote this down. You'll see, when that inner self is stirred, the outer shell, the outer shell is disturbed. <laughs> you see, when you get stirred on the inside, the outer shell it's going to be shell. It's going to be disturbed because there's going to come a deal and you're going to begin to deal with your life. Up. Like your brother said, we're not perfect. But if you get, you cannot get in a Holy Ghost service. That's why we are so dumb. You get you know, a Holy Ghost. Ja, 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 ja. I'm like this. Wonder I got anywhere like this. No. When you set a pot, Ezekiel speaks to set a pot of water on the stove and the water. When it begins to heat, all the scones going to rise to the top. Yeah. When you get in a Holy Ghost meeting, if there's anything in you ought not be there, it's going to come to the top. And you have to deal with it. So we, rather than have anybody, maybe not see, it means you're either going to have, I don't know what I'm saying, is either you're going to deal with it, make it right, or you're not going to come back. Who needs long up with you? I'm going to speak in service and just have, well, they lay, they lay out while I'm there and they come back. But I hope the guy... Part of what they, we're supposed to be doing. Somebody give us this. Said we're, we're walking in the office of the prophet. We're supposed to go and stir it up in the Amen. church. Stir up people. I'm not here to, to tell you how great you are. I'm not great, but I know this. I know this. We have all, we've all backed off what we once said was true. Amen. Boys, get quiet. <laughs> when I was growing up, my kids did not even have a television. We did not even have a television. They're not preaching against TV. It's because they got them now. But we're taking computers. We're, we're taking computers. We and, and, and made uh, 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 that the computer a babysitter for our children and let them go on. You know, it's true. It's almost like the kids are growing into the thing. It's almost like little science fiction movies. And what I'm saying is this: sir. we have moved away from what we used to preach as truth, as holiness, as righteous, and we're going to have to come back to it. We're going to have to come back to it. We're going to be so stirred in our spirit. And then in 2 Timothy 1, 6, I didn't mean to preach this hard. It sounds hard. That is why I would remind you to stir up. That means rekindle yes. the embers, the flame, and keep burning. Stir it up. I, I want the fire burning. Amen. Amen. I want the fire burning. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, well, you need the Holy Ghost this morning. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost with fire, with the emphasis of tongue speaking. So one right. said, do you seek for tongues? Don't seek for the power. When you, when you buy a pair of shoes, you get the tongues, amen? You see? That's <laughs> right. Come on. Hey, right. Hey, right. You don't, 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 don't emphasize on the tongues. However, when you speak in tongues, you're speaking in a language the devil can't speak in, and you're talking to God. Right there, everyone knows what I'm saying. But for those shut up, of course, you don't know that language. Tell it. You know that. We need to have that language. We need to have that sound. What would it be like? It's just like Chronicles is one place that people were all making one sound. What would happen if everybody, by the way, that happened in the 
book of Acts 2 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they all spoke in tongues, and the Spirit gave letters, and they went throughout Jerusalem, and it was a massive move of God took place. Because they were all making one sound. You see, the church, oh, I'm preaching good now. The church is not making one sound. There's some over here, maybe you should speak in tongues. Some over here say you shouldn't speak in tongues. There's some over say it's just way that way. It's one way, according to the Word of God. If the Word of God said it, it's so. And that's what we need to come back to. What does the Word of God say? And when we're stirred up in our heart, we're going to talk to anybody or anything. The inner fire. The inner fire. The inner fire. The Pentecostal fire are stirring to excite, to ignite. <laughs> we come by, we were late, we have a week, we come by like Carl Stephen Strader's church, he said, Ignited Fire. That's a lot to live up to. I've been there a couple of times, he's got a great church. Ignited Fire. Ignited church. Ignited, ignited. Set on fire. That when you walk through the door, boom, something this should explode in you. Yes. You understand? Yes. We should, uh, you hear me? Yes. We should be so untamed and so radical, extremist, my God, that people are going to have to get in or get out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, wrong time in there. <laughs> Don't give it Stir up. And it says to stir up. It means to arouse from inactivity to become active. It means to be current. I feel like I am current. Think of a God there. The current means what is God saying? I know ministers much younger than us. And they're still stuck. Nothing wrong for him, but they're still stuck in the old way. There's nothing wrong with the old way in many ways. But still stuck and cannot move into what God's doing today. Yes. I don't ever, and I don't feel like I am because I'm always, always got to hear what is God saying? Yeah. What is God saying to do? I feel like I, I am a psalmist. I play the guitar. I sing prophecies. And there's a level of praise and worship. Most churches have done good here today. But most churches I go to have not come the level I'm talking about. Huh? I'm talking about a level. I'm talking about a level of worship and praise. I'm talking about a place. There's going to be a time. Somewhere, I believe, I've said this all my life, that there's going to be such a praise and worship that people are going to be healed in that atmosphere. There should not be no diseases. And it should not be about a minister having an ornament of oil and pray for him. It should be because we're in the presence of God. We're just a move of God. You know what the church needs? The church needs a good Holy Ghost fumigation. Come back, turn that in the house up, and then put that tin on it, amen, and shoot that stuff in it, and kill it. I'm not going to put you to I don't want to start and kill every insect, kill every disease, kill Brother Don, you look at Kill everything. Kill everything. Kill everything that's contrary to you. I may sound like I'm chasing a rabbit, but I tell you what, that's I'm having fun chasing a rabbit. There was no small stir about the way. The Lord stirred up jealousy in Isaiah 42, 13. He, and the Lord stirred up the spirit, Haggai 1 and 14. He stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. That means the fertile seed and of the remnant of the people. God is stirring his people. There's a people being stirred. They're looking for more than what they've been seeing, for more than they've been feeling. They're looking for the real Deuteronomy 30 to 11, as an eagle stirs up her nest. You know what? God says, I'm stirring up my, the nest of my people. And people are people got into a resting place. They got into a comfort zone. They got into what they're, what they're, they're used to. He said, no, I'm going to push you out. I'm going to push you out of the nest. And sometimes when you're being pushed out of this nest, I want to tell you, sometimes you feel like you're falling. That little baby eagle falls and falls. All of a sudden, they begin to flap their wings. And they begin to know they can fly. And God says, I'm going to push you out of your nest. I'm going to make my people so uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but God pushed me and George into a very uncomfortable zone. Amen. And that uncomfortable zone is where you can come into his divine zone. You know what I'm saying? He said, too many of my people are on this side of the the timeline. It's like when you're going to the Pensacola. At some point, the time changes up. How many would agree it's time for your time to change up? Yeah. It's time for you to move into the next dimension. Yeah. I don't mean next level even, but next dimension of God's glorious grace yeah. where the power of God will come down and manifest himself so much. Yeah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. Oh, Rosh Hashanah. 
hearing that sound. You see, when God spoke to me, of course, he added something else. I haven't seen that part. And I have no idea what he meant by the other part. But when, I, when God said, hear the sound. The drought is over. <laughs> now, if your drought's not over, I, I can't help you. Listen to hear the word of God. He said to me, the drought is over. Mm-hmm. The drought is over. Mm-hmm. I went to the post office. And there were no checks. That's our, that's our tithing often coming. Not tithe, all often comes. It's in, the, it's in the mailbox. There weren't from there. Now, that's what God does to you. The drought's over, and you go look where it should be. It's not there. <laughs> Now, how do you understand? I'm preaching about the drought so we say, oh, that's great. You're the drought so God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we're looking, and we're looking for it. But then all of a sudden, I, I said, what happened? And then the next week, these people that were normally at a certain time come in later. Fine, they come in. And I was sitting up one of them. And he said, y'all need a van to drive. It's a doctor. I said, praise God. He said, my father-in-law's got a van and he's getting too old and they got to take stuff away from him. And if we can, we'll get that van and we're going to give it to you. Now, I want to tell you, that makes my face start jumping. Driving a truck in there. Me and my wife are trying to be debt free. I'd rather be debt free. I'm not trying to impress you. I got a truck 12 years old and a car 14 years old. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to get a Cadillac to impress you and make naked things. <laughs> <laughs> you see me? If I ever come back here again, I'm driving something new. It's because God gave it. Amen. Amen. Whether I have a little problem proving this man that he, you know, anyhow, what I'm saying is God says the drought is over. Now, do you believe it or not? That could be sickness, that could be health, that could be money. That can be a relationship. That can be anything. But you got to believe. Yes. Yes. This drought is over. This drought is over. This drought is over. I hear the sound. And it says in Psalms 89, 15, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk the Lord in the light of my countenance. Blessed are the people that hear the sound. That hear the sound. This, this pastor will next week about a month ago one of our churches we went there and his wife had died three months ago and she was the main probably the main seemed like the main uh, the apostle ministry of the church and I went there and he, he acknowledged who we were but you know he, and he was glad we were there and the Lord said you got a word now I'm in a church I've never been in and I walked up to the platform and said pastor we got a word for you he said well you got guts <laughs> he said I said it I walked up there and laid my hand on his chest and began, for about 10 minutes, like his prophesied stuff. And he began to cry and weep and pull me closer to him. He said, Brother, you heard the sound. He said, You had a word for me, but you've got a word for my house. We're going there next week. He said, You've got a word. You see, there must be a word for the house. Yes. I don't just want to go preach, preach. Sermon, sir? No. Do I have a word for the house? A word for the people to sit here? You might not belong to this house every Sunday, but do I have a word for the people to sit here? But coming here, I have a word for this house. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That in the next seven weeks, something really radical should be taking place. Hallelujah. Changes should be taking place. Hallelujah. The people that hear the sound. And see, the sound is this. There's a sound. There's a rumble. A rumble. A rumble going on. How many want to rumble? There's no rumble fight. Amen. A fight. There's a fight going on. There's a rumble. The rumble is a sound of jubilee. You see, God knows that this is a jubilee season. I am not talking about the 50 years. I'm talking about jubilee season in your spirit, in your heart. Do you believe that that type of a thing is happening? A time to set free. So God said, I'm going to set my people free.
there's so many voices in the earth and they sound there's so many things. I don't know if any of you, I'm not preaching politics, but you hear one say it's all this way, you hear another say it's all that way. And I, it looks like they're all liars. <laughs> looks like men are all out for themselves. So I'm safe. I didn't say Republican or Democrat. I said they're all. <laughs> they're all. Come on. Need to come up for God. Come on. They all need to come up for God. Amen. Amen. I know we got something real in the capital. When they say there's a prayer Yeah. A real prayer Real prayer meeting. Uh-huh. Invite Ron Moore. I'll be honest, real Moore. Amen. Amen. Not somebody gonna come in and say, "Oh, y'all doing so great and well." I'm so sick of the promise. Say, "Well done, that I this thing's a pastor." He's sitting there. I'm in a pastor too. And you got these people living, this person living, praying on God, and the man, and the woman of God, walks up. Thus saith the Lord, "What you're doing is well and pleasing in my sight." Just keep on. That happens. children of Israel sang this song. I hear people saying, that little song I sung a while ago, that was that was a song of the Lord. I took it from the song you were singing. Last week I sung a song, and a young man come up, he said, I never heard singing like that. That's like you were making it up as you were going. And I said, yeah, I was. Some people don't understand. How can we have these new songs in the church? And I tell them, Amazing Grace wasn't always a song. Power of the Blood wasn't always a song. Every song that you sing, it wasn't a song at one time. Someone got birth in that song. I don't want to shock God. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Yes. I want to tell you something. On the level of music and the dimension of music, every country singer that has a hit is because they go through something and they get something in their heart and they begin to sing from their spirit what has taken place, some sort of a bad thing. If we as the children of God, there ought to be something glorious coming. I'm going to prophesy something. There ought to be songs birthed in this church, uh, songs no one's ever heard of. You sing them one time, you get them on tape, and you sing them again. I'm there's churches that have their own songs. You've never heard them before. And maybe you do sing some, because I've never heard these songs, so I don't know where they come from. But they don't hear it. I've never heard all the songs. But what God is trying to do, He's trying to birth something. How many of you said, birth something? Birth something. Birth something. You've never been there before. You've never yes. seen it before. It's not charismatic. It's not Pentecostal. It's God. Amen. Some of you kind of strange. What do you do? When the Holy Ghost gives me a spirit. Paul will say, I'm not turning loose of this promise of God. I'm not turning loose of this promise of God. Amen. Which when he said cancer, she did not turn loose of the promise of God. Amen. And I can remember sitting in the, in the university hospital in Tampa all night long that class when they went through about four, eight or ten experiments, you know, trying to find out what was wrong with her. Uh-huh. And finally, and finally they had they operated and, and, and got this thing out of her. But I'm going to say to you this. I sit 
sit there and all night long I was helping her take the medicine, but still at the same time, there's times you feel so alone and you feel like there's no one in this world around you. But I knew God was there. I knew God was there. I knew God was there. And that's what we got to know. Even if you're in prison like this brother was, and there's people in prison right now, and they're, and they're not going to get out quickly. They're going to have to serve a time. But but those that have been saved, they know that God was there. I got a brother who wrote up the outlaws in Virginia Beach, and he went to prison for 20 years, and he got saved. And I'm glad he went to prison because in prison he got saved. Praise God. In prison he turned his life over to God and serving God now, right and attending a Baptist church in the mountains of Virginia. But whatever the circumstance we are in, God's going to speak to our heart. But it's the Holy Ghost brain. <laughs> Faith people, get an egg and keep them covered. We're going to bring them, but in the last few weeks, I've forgotten that word, bring them more than ever before. The staying power. Yes, yes. I stay. Yes. You got to get the right. Some, some situations you're in, you got to have the ring to stay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Some pastors, they got to have a ring to stay where they're at. Amen. Because they don't look very good at the point they're at that point. You gotta stay. Some marriages, you gotta stay. No, things aren't right right now, but I'm gonna stay. I'm, I got the rain, but it. things are gonna get better. Amen. Amen. And if you stay, all I can tell you, if you stay, the enemy is going to be routed out. Amen. Amen. What we need Amen. is a Holy Ghost boot router. You know one of those things you put your step in and it goes to the other. Because we got hurt. Oh. Yes, strongholds. Build them up. Oh, yeah. He said, March. 
And you march and see your tire. Don't you think first, second, third, sixth, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, all. But don't shout. Did I say shout? city to Seminole. This is my territory in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And every church I go in, I'm going to stir it up through the power of the Holy Ghost and say, this is not what God wants us to be. He wants us to be so far out there. You see, you need to get so far out there, there's no place that to go. Amen. 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 Because they said they got up. 
They were filled with the Holy Ghost. By the way, another thing is that they were all sitting. Look at that. Yeah. You think they got to be on the floor staying up? They were all sitting. Sitting the Holy Ghost, amen? But they got up. Oh, the you get what I'm talking about, you're going to get up. <laughs> Or even 
even act sometimes. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this. Most of the time, we would like to be freer than we are. Amen. Come on now. We would Amen. like to be freer than we are. Yeah. 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 I mean. <laughs> yeah. Right? Amen. Got arthritis back here. I can't move that leg through the middle. Oh, no. I'm not yeah. making fun. I'm not talking about real arthritis. I'm talking about religious arthritis. <laughs> Jump up and sprout the kingdom of God. God says, I'm bringing a rain. 
rain to my house. And it's going to be the sound of abundance. It's going to be the sound of abundance. Thank you, Lord. My church and my house. Thank you, Lord. Mm. But more than that, he said, I'm going to bring a double portion. He said, I know I'm taking a long time, but he said, I'm going to bring a double portion. Mm. He said in Isaiah 61, 10, for your shame you shall have double. And for confusion, you shall rejoice in your portion. Therefore, yeah. it is in heaven. Yeah. 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 He said in Zechariah yeah. 9 and 12, turn into the strongholds. Thank you could lock. He said, God says, lock, lock into the options I give you. You're going to possess the devil for yeah. all your shame. And yeah. then if you want to go over to Deuteronomy 1, 10, and 11, he said, here, he said, God says, I want you to multiply. A lot of people have a problem with this, but I guess if Kenneth Cope says, I can say it. I said it for our instance, but maybe this is a year ago. God is saying, I'm going to multiply my people, and you shall be as a thousand. I'm going beyond a hundred folks. I'm going to be on a double. He said, God says, I want to bring my people into a place of multiplication like you've never seen it. But you got to understand this. In all west on Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. God said, if I can find the people that will yes. seek me, if I can find the people yes. that will take the stops out, if I can find the people that will serve me with all yes. their heart, there is nothing yes. I will not do for them. There is nothing that I will not do for them. He said, if i got a people making one sound, and I know this scripture in Genesis is speaking in a negative, it says, but there was one sound in their land, and there was nothing in the, from their imagination and when they were building the Tower of Babel. But there was a time there was one sound. If a church, listen, if a church can come to one sound being made, there is nothing that church, that people cannot do. Amen. Hallelujah. That will break through.
For yea, I have come this day even to speak to your heart, to speak to your innermost being. That whatever you have need of today, I am here, your Lord, your God, to meet that need. That whatever the condition, whatever the situation, whatever the problem, whatever the sickness, whatever the matter may be, whatever the matter may be, there is divine manner for you. Meaning, what is it that God will do? What is it God will do for you today? He'll do whatever you have need of. And everybody here, there's different needs, different conditions, different problems. But I want to be a worshiper. I want to be a worshiper. I want to be one who seeks God with all my heart, all my soul, with all my spirit. Seek God. God, we're, we're hungry. As, as the as as psalm says, Lord, I'm desperate for you. We're desperate for a fresh anointing today. A fresh anointing. A fresh release of the spirit. A freshness in our lives. God, this day, I pray. You feel like you've been wedged in, hedged in, and couldn't get out. The enemy has tried to tell you that there's nowhere free to go. You, you're going to have to learn to live with this, whether it be physical or, or mental or financial or, or whatever. You're going to have to just, no, you don't have to live with it. No, you don't have to live with it. Do not accept that. Do not accept that which the enemy is trying to tell you today. But get the rhema on it. There's a sound. There's a sound. Get that sound in your spirit, in your soul. Get that sound. The drought is over. The drought is over today. The drought is over today. You hear me? The drought is over today. The drought is over today. Deals that would not come through are going to come through. Situations that look complicated are going to be released in the name of Jesus. Uh, relationships, relationships are going to be are going to come together that have been broken. I'm telling you right now, in the name of Jesus, the drought in that situation, the drought in that circumstance is over. If you believe it, you just need to stand to your feet and begin to worship God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Send the rain, Lord. Send the rain, Lord. Send the rain, Lord. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. You need prayer today. You want to. You, you need God to speak to you. You just begin to come up here right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, don't procrastinate. Don't stand back there and say, "When I feel something, I'm telling you, there's people need to get down here right now." Because God says it's about to be a dawning of a new day, and that thing is broken. 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 